There you are, Raggy. Hey, Scoob. Boy, am I glad to see you. Uh, look what I found. A giant water slide. So what do we do now? I know. Let's have a sing-along. Zoinks. The guitar duel. Hey, look, it's another slide. Um, this one is a bunch of, like, it looks like sinks. They're like faucets. And it's in the sky. And the faucet thing reminds me of the Shell City slide level from the Spongebob movie game. And this slide in general, which I just died on, I'm awesome, uh, reminds me of a lot of the slide missions in the Ratatouille video game. And the uh, lightning strikes and clouds in the background and being high up in the air in a rainstorm type setting uh, reminds me of a different level from a non-slide level from the Ratatouille video games. So uh, all, oh, I just bumped my mic. All video games are the same is what I was going to say. And I love to play them. Uh, and speaking of, of that, speaking of playing video games and such, uh, as always, after watching over the last video, I uh, noticed that I completely failed to actually fully say all of the things that I was uh, planning on saying. As most of you know, I, I do try to think ahead for topics to talk about during these commentary videos, because otherwise it's just a bunch of silence of me talking over the slide and getting ham. Getting ham is pretty cool, though. I'm glad that I got the ham. Um, but, so I, I didn't finish them, so I'm gonna finish some of those points. And one was I was talking, as I often am, about Blockbuster. And the point that I was making was that it was fun to me to uh, browse all of the different covers of movies and especially video games there. Um, because it would give me... That's, like, how I learned about a lot of movies and games that I absolutely would not have played or watched when I was a kid, because I I was squeamish around blood. Uh, if, if anything had, like, cleavage on it, there's no way that was getting past my mom or whatever, even if, even if I wanted to play it. Um, but it, it was, like, my window into that realm, other than when I would watch my brother play... M-rated video games, but, um, and it's so weird because I would just, like, after a while I knew what was in there, and I would just intentionally seek out certain covers to get certain reactions. Like, I would, in I I'll, after a while, I didn't intentionally seek them out, but I, I always knew that I was going to be seeing covers that, like, freaked me out, especially for horror movies. I remember Child's Play, like, one of the, or no, uh, The Seed of Chucky. And uh, Dead Silence, about the puppet. Those were the two that really freaked me out all the time. Also, Bicentennial Man, for some reason. The movie where Robin Williams is like a robot thing. Um, just something about the like split in his face and his mouth just makes me uncomfortable. I also remember being uncomfortable at the cover for uh, the movie... I think it's me, myself, and Irene, but it's the Jim Carrey movie where the poster is his face with two different facial expressions split in half. And I don't know why, just, like, faces split in half didn't make me feel good when I was a kid. I can't really explain it. Anyway, I've talked over some exposition. It's basically just that the guitar ghoul is a guy. Um, we, I think we introduced a new character, this girl with the purple hair, I forget her name, but she has info related vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the guitar ghoul who's out and about. And uh, this burger opened, which means we can get the carrot, which is great. We can use the carrot for all kinds of tasty food, like carrot cake. Um... But yeah, the other thing that I would do, of course, as a young boy was, with both movies and video games, was to look at the uh, the horny covers and, and titillate myself with those. And again, it was because I knew, like, well, I'm never going to be able to play this game or watch this movie. I mean, at least until I'm an adult, but, like, I have no desire to really 
engaged because now I'm old enough to know that most horny video games aren't even good enough to like be worth buying and getting horny over like they're not even especially like you know horny like I, I or I mean just for me if if like poorly rendered like CGI titties is something like really just like gets you going then like cool but I almost don't understand the point of them because they're rated like M or AO you need to be an adult to get them but I can't like the only time that I was ever like actually uh, enticed by it was when I was like 12 and I wasn't even like playing these games I was just looking at their covers and being like oh this game has tits I bet that game is awesome um, like the Dead or Alive series, although the Dead or Alive games, some of them are actually pretty good. Um, and the extre even the Extreme Beach Volleyball game is, I remember being fun when I actually played it once. Um, I'm not entirely, I remember it was rated M, and I think it was rated M for nudity, because, like, all the girls are in bikinis, but I don't remember any of them being, like, explicitly naked. That's not nudity, if we're in, if we're in clothes, it's not nudity, you fucking weirdo. Um, and like anime games, of course, are, are horny as fuck, um, and, and their covers are kind of explicit. Uh, the other big one was the Leisure Suit Larry one, the, the Magna Cum Laude game, which I've seen gameplay of, and it looks terrible. It looks like a fucking awful game. Um, not fun at all, and again, not even like, you know, even if you were like depraved and you hadn't seen real human genitalia in decades. I really don't think that that, that, that game would be especially... Because all of the sex stuff is, like, not... For one thing, not very graphic, and also, like, entirely tongue-in-cheek, so it's, like... And, like, goofy, and I don't know. Just, uh, I guess it works for some people. Or maybe p some people just like playing shitty games as long as they have tits in them, like, even if... Even if, you know, it's not really, like, doing anything for them. It's just like, well, it's, it's okay, there's tits in it. I, I'm not sure what the appeal or audience is, but, um, yeah. Maybe I'll do a Let's Try of that Leisure Suit Larry game sometime. See if it's, like, actually as terrible to play as it is to watch people play. I have to censor some parts of it. Because there are, like, parts that have, like, tits and things. But again, that's like as bad as it go. I, I don't remember seeing a single erect penis. That's weak sauce. Um, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna make a game all about like juvenile sex stuff, but you can't even bring yourself to put a dick in it, like you're you're uh, just weak, and you just wanted to make a video game with titty with bouncy titties in it, and you didn't even have to go out of your way to make an uh, unprofitable adults only rated game to do that. They put big floppy titties in fucking banjo kazooie games. Like, I don't know. Or like, you know, go get that mod of Tomb Raider or Elder Scrolls. Or The Sims. The Sims sex mods are, uh, are more actually horny than any of those, like, stupid early 2000s horny games. Which I think were just marketed off of their controversy, but it never even really worked. Because the only game controversy that people in America care about is... Be, is like GTA and violent stuff, but um. Anyway, but yeah, I'd be looking at that shit when I was in Blockbuster, when I was in B-Buster back in the day. I would uh be looking at all the games that I'll never play and being like, you know, oh, this is for an adult. I can't wait till I'm an adult and I do stuff like that. And now fast forward to now and I am an adult and here I am playing fucking Scooby-Doo Unmasked. Nothing's changed. Like, I'm playing the same exact video games. I'm just uh, uh, more depressed and have less money, honestly. Less money directly to my name. I mean, if you include all my debts, I'm, like, far into the negative. Um, I guess, like, I have more money in my bank account than I when I was a kid, but not actually the entire time, because they're, you know, in middle school and high school when I was just racking up Christmas money and not really spending it on much of anything. You know, fucking, I was sitting pretty good right there. Uh, 
But yeah, um, to say some things about the level, I suppose. This is a, uh... Uh... A uh, fun one. I think this is one of the better ones in the in the theme park level. I think it's one of my favorite ones. I'm not a gigantic fan of the clowns. I mean, I, I think the clowns are fine. I don't love clowns or anything, but they're okay. Um, the ones in this game, at least. That's like, um, I don't know if people watching this will have heard about it, but I think it was two years ago or maybe more than that, in, in Philly, where, like, I don't know if it was one guy or a couple guys, but they were dressing up as clowns and, like, just kind of existing in the city. I don't think they did anything. I mean, if they did, then that sucks. Like, I don't think they hurt anybody or whatever, but they would just, like, walk around and, like, be in the distance near kids and, like, make people uncomfortable, and it was, like, around Halloween time. And, uh, like, I mean, obviously it sucked. Like, everyone was like, okay, fuck that. Like, there's just people dressed as clowns just standing around menacingly. I don't like that. Um, and uh, then it just stopped. And I think I remember hearing recently that someone made a documentary about it, but I don't know if it's about the specific, the, the Philly clowns, or if just... Because I'd heard about it in other places. I don't, is it just about, was there a nationwide clown outbreak that resulted in nothing and may, someone made a whole movie about it? I don't know, but I, I guess maybe I should check out the documentary. Oh yeah, there's me getting hurt by that thing. I It may have to honestly do with your distance from it because earlier I think it was on screen and didn't hurt me, so... I'm not sure if anyone is a Scooby-Doo unmasked expert and knows what specifically about those annoying ass jack-in-the-boxes makes them hurt you. If you'd like to tell me, that would be lovely. I like that. I love uh, doing the big slam. That's like in the uh, Underminer video game, the Incredibles game, when you use the Increda slam on like boxes or any destructible things in the world. It's just a very satisfying, like, crunch sound. I like it a lot. Um, anyway, this is me kind of mucking about. I forgot about the clue back there, so now I'm, like, trying to remember what I need to do to get there. And it's quite simple, but I just, I had no, like, perspective of where I was. So there you go. And yeah, you're supposed to do you're supposed to go to the middle of that thing first and trigger all this shit and then do everything that I just did, but I don't play by the rules and so I didn't do that. Not sure how that worked getting hit while I was doing the slam thing, but I get my ass beat here, which sucked. I mean, there are a million enemies throwing a ton of shit at me right now. Ho! That's nice. Uh, and now, good thing, my strat worked out that I left all the Scooby snack boxes around so that if I lost a bunch of health points, then I could replenish, and that's precisely the situation that I'm in, and now I can go and collect my wares that I left. But then I have to, like, redo this whole area to get back up there, which sucks, but... The price you pay for being bad at video games, I suppose. <laughs> um, but yeah, the other thing that I guess I wanted to finish up saying, I basically said my piece about it, but just about how I'm not a huge fan of haunted houses. Um, I'm not a fan of anything like that. I don't like the idea of going out of my way to do like a social thing that will freak me out. I already have anxiety. I don't need to like be feel like I'm in peril when I'm not um like uh oh god the terror behind the walls thing that they do so Philly has the Eastern State Penitentiary which is awesome you know, like I visited it normally just you can do tours of it and whatnot and it's really cool uh one of the oldest surviving prisons in the country if I remember correctly 
and it's neat. It's a cool exhibit itself on like prison history. Um, but around Halloween, they do this thing there called Terror Behind the Walls, where they basically it's at night and they turn all the lights off, and they just let you go into the penitentiary, and they have people in the cells like dressed up as like spooky ghosties or whatever and they can like grab you and take you into the cells and i don't know they i don't know if they just like growl at you or if they like fuck with you or what but um and every year i get invited by people to go and uh every year my uh the amount that i am absolutely sure that i don't want to do that just increases every year i'm like uh, uh, walking around in a dark place, uh, with a fear that someone is going to come out and touch me. Um, no thanks, I already deal that when I'm walking in, like, the city at night alone. Like, that's already an ex a stupid anxiety that I have, that just, oh, if, if it's dark and quiet for too long, something menacing will come hurt me. Like, I... And I don't need to be in that intimidating of a space. Uh, yeah, also jail. Like, not a, a setting that I'm eager to spend a lot of time in. Um, yeah, and so, like... And especially ever since I was a kid and I learned the fact that you can literally be scared to death. Like, your heart can just fuck up after being surprised and you can die from that. Uh, fuck that. Um nobody fuck with me like I don't like that's so goddamn unfair <laughs> that 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 can happen um so yeah just yeah not I'm not doing any haunted house shit I'm not doing any of that I you know I'm fine with vicariously living experiences through media I don't need any more immersion. I like to do more VR stuff, by which I mean any. I'm I'm very sad that I haven't had really any exposure to VR. I I used one twice in Best Buy for like five minutes each time, and I mean it wasn't spectacular or whatever, but it was like oh I wish that I wasn't just standing in a Best Buy doing this and could actually just on my own time fuck with this. Um, but I don't know, I, I feel like VR will be exciting as time goes on and I'll want to be privy to it, so it would be something that I'd be interested in doing. And this part reminds me of several video games. I guess there are quite a few like circus levels of platforming games. I mean, it's a pretty easy thing to make a platforming level out of, I feel like, because, you know, people think of a, of a circus like Big Top as something with a lot of climbable things, trapeze stuff, clowns, you know, clowns are always just a, they're just one of those stock things that you can put in something as an enemy and it'll be good, so. Um... But yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say about that. So sorry that it takes me like three videos to make a single point. Um, one thing I, I have been thinking about also is, um, so Halloween happened recently, and I was at my girlfriend's parents' house, um, and we were carving pumpkins and we were handing out candy, and I haven't handed out candy to kids on Halloween in years. Uh, I trick-or-treated until my uh until eighth grade and then uh freshman and sophomore year of high school i did nothing for halloween um and then every year since then i have alternated between going to parties or doing nothing so um uh, so this year I decided on actual Halloween, like, we went to some parties the weekend of, um, cause Halloween was, like, in the middle of the week, but on actual Halloween we went to my girlfriend's parents' house to hand out candy, and we were there for, like, five hours during what I would assume are prime trick-or-treating hours, at least they were when I was a kid, and I think we may have given candy to, like, ten kids. 
Um, and, it, you know, it's like a suburban neighborhood. Like, I see kids there all the time. There are families with trick-or-treating age children, I think. Um, and, uh, yeah, just didn't, didn't see all that many kids. And I'm wondering, one thing that it might be, honestly, is that the sort of generation that raised, like, me and my girlfriend that, you know, bought houses in these kinds of areas, I mean, their kids are all our age. They're not of trick-or-treating age anymore, so maybe that's it. Just all the kids are too old, and now it's just their parents living there, as it is with her. But, um... I think it also, like, I don't know, I don't hear about kids trick-or-treating quite as much as before. I also don't think kids buy toys as much as they used to. Like, I used to be obsessed with buying toys as a kid, and uh, most kids aren't really that, like, crazy about Like, younger kids are, but, like... I was at Walmart recently, and they were practically fucking giving away the toys. I saw, like, Barbies and and Hot Wheels shit that was, like, 50 bucks when I was a kid, and they were, like, $15. And I was like, well, goddamn, all these, all these hot deals being wasted on these kids that are just, you know, gonna go drool on an iPad and have way more fun than I ever did. Like, that sucks.